So the MLB draft is officially over. I've had a day to think about the second day of the draft. All the players picked there. I'm not going to do worse players from the second day because, you know, first round, that's where the hype is. But I will tell you in today's video who the best players taking in the second third, fourth, fifth round were in the MLB draft. That way you guys can know who was taken by your favorite team that might be a little bit of a sleeper pick. There's some players I'm very excited about that got taken in rounds two through five. So I think I got about 11 names that I want to talk about in today's video. A bunch of different teams, a bunch of different rounds. I'm excited about these players. As always, if you guys do enjoy this draft content, make sure to leave a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. Get 3,000 likes on today's video. I'll drop my draft grades video tomorrow on Sunday. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, click that sub button, specifically draft. Remember to get in the comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Do you with me who are some other late round sleepers that you think can become great players and don't forget you can follow me on twitter and instagram at giraffe neck mark links in the description always talking baseball over there getting us started real early in the second round with the 43rd overall pick in the draft the seattle mariners selected outfielder out of texas a m university zach deloach i really like what i've seen out of zach deloach nice left-handed swing has explosive hips he really uses that lower half to his advantage uses it to help drive the baseball launches it off his bat he has a lot of pop from what i can tell i think that he is going to be a player that can hit for some of Above average power in the majors. I'm really excited about what he can do at the plate. Now in the field, running, that is a pretty good run grade. To me, looks a little slower, but corner outfield for this guy with the kind of offense that I think he can produce is going to be a nice pick by the Seattle Mariners here in the second round. I see him as like a 20 plus home run guy a year, without a doubt. I love that left-handed swing. And again, those hips, lots of power there from the core. The next pick that I want to talk about comes at number 47 by the Chicago White Sox, where they took high school pitcher out of Refugio. High school? I don't know, Texas? Jared Kelly. I was very high on Jared Kelly. So was MLB.com, so were a lot of scouts. I had him ranked around that 10 to 15 range in my list. I think that he's a fantastic prospect to work with. Now, he is a little bit tight in his pitching, and I think what scared a lot of teams off is the fact that he is going to the University of Texas. Maybe they thought there could have been a signability issue, because if you look at what this guy has, his size, his build, he should be a first-round talent. Now, as I said, he is a little bit tight. He can loosen up a little bit on the mound, but he has a really nice fastball, 95 plus miles an hour. It's very heavy with some movement. He has a filthy, filthy changeup. My biggest concern with him is that he does slow down on his breaking pitches a little bit, and against left-handed batters right Right now, he doesn't really attack them. Stays away, 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 and doesn't use the changeup that much, which is confusing to me. But overall, with Jared Kelly, what you're seeing is a young kid who's a massive human, has a great fastball, nice changeup, and someone that you can build upon. Mold him into a really good pitcher. I like what I'm seeing from Jared Kelly. That's a guy who I thought was a first round pick. Staying inside the second round, we now move to the 55th pick in the draft. The Washington Nationals selected right handed pitcher out of LSU, Cole Henry. Right off the bat, Cole Henry, the dude throws cheddar. That's literally what I put in the first line of my breakdown cheddar. Heat with movement. This guy guy's fastball is absolutely electric. I love what I'm seeing there from the fastball department. His secondary pitches can be nasty, but they're a little bit inconsistent. Doesn't necessarily throw them for strikes all the time, but the fact that he does have that incredible fastball, along with these secondary pitches that do have movement, are nasty. It allows for those pitches to be somewhat effective. Now, on the mound, he's violent when he throws. A lot of moving parts comes at you. He's going 110% all the time, so I think durability might be an issue for him, as we've seen in college, but if you can get that health under control, maybe a more relaxed, a more calm approach on the mound, Cole Henry can be something special for the Nationals, adding him to the list of loaded pitchers they got this draft. Washington Nationals popping up again. Love their draft. At number 71, they took shortstop out of Florida, Monsignor Edward Pace High School, Samuel Infante. 6'1", 185. I like this kid a lot. Now, MLB Pipeline had him rated as 149. I think he's way higher. I think he's really, really good. He's right around like my top 50 players in the draft. At the plate, I think he has a really nice swing. A little bit inconsistent with the front foot. Has to get it down a little bit earlier, but that is all things that you can fix. He's a high school guy. He has time to develop. There's no big expectation for him to fly up the system immediately. He has that time to develop his hit tool. And let me tell you, there's not much to fix. Just got to get that foot down a little more consistently. His power is great. I think he really uses his entire body to his advantage. Might not be a shortstop, which is one of the reasons why he drops a little bit. Might be a little bit more of a corner or second baseman. Decent arm, but the mobility just isn't amazing. So the field is the knock for him, but at the plate, I love what I'm seeing. His swing is really nice, and I think he can hit at a very high level in the majors. To the third round we go, and finally at the number 80 overall pick, Cole Wilcox from the University of Georgia comes off the board to the San Diego Padres. I couldn't believe it took so long for him to get picked because he was a guy inside my top 30 players in the draft. Cole Wilcox kind of overshadowed a little bit by Emerson Hancock on that pitching staff in Georgia. He is a very good pitcher though. Nice run to his fastball. Sits 96, so he's definitely got some impressive stuff. His slider has a lot of room for improvement, but it has the guts there to show good potential that it can be a very good second pitch to get some outs. The issue with Cole Wilcox is he might be better off as a reliever. Really get him just absolutely pump gas with that 
fastball, come in throwing 120%, throw a hard slider. That might be his best spot, but he does have the stuff. He has the mechanics. He is a good enough pitcher to be a starter. It's just, you're going to have to figure out whether or not you can get him to be consistently good as a starter, or do you make him a bullpen arm and get the most out of him possible? Still though, at number 80 overall for a guy ranked inside my top 30, that's a fantastic pick by the San Diego Padres. Seven picks later, the Philadelphia Phillies selected shortstop out of University of Arkansas, Casey Martin, another guy who is very highly ranked on my list. I think he's a really good ball player. Now, shortstop is definitely not his position. So maybe that's why he dropped a little bit in these rankings. But for me, he was inside my top 20 players available in the draft. I absolutely love what he does at the plate. Now, one thing to note about his swing though, his head level does change. He goes from high to low, which could cause some problems later on with some breaking pitches, changing the level of your eye. But so far, it hasn't been a problem for him. And to me, that's a very easy fix. That's a quick just adjustment. And he might even be hitting better than what we've already seen. He's a line drive hitter, hits to all fields, has a little bit of pop in his bat too. He's not gonna be a 30, 40 home run guy, but I can very much see him being a Xander Bogarts type shortstop. Not the same size, but same type of hit tool, same type of glove tool, and he's got a strong arm. So I think in the third round at 87, that's a fantastic pick by the Phillies. See, I'm not biased. I'll give them credit when credit's due. At number 89, we possibly saw the biggest deal of the draft, and that is the Boston Red Sox taking Blaze Jordan, who reclassified into this year's draft, but for the 2021 class, he was the number one overall player. Now, how are the Red Sox able to do this? Well, because they didn't have a second round pick, they saved some money there, and they picked Nick York in the first round, which saved some money. They are able to give Blaze Jordan massive amounts of money, basically first round money, with the hopes that he's going to sign. And I really think he's going to. I don't think he's going to Mississippi State. Blaze Jordan has some of the most fun hit tools in the draft. His hands are so fast, lightning quick, absolutely rakes. His bat speed is nuts, zips through the zone. He's explosive. At 13 years old, he had a 500 foot homer. And I don't want to hear his with a metal bat. He was 13. He hadn't even finished puberty. Now, the reason that he's dropped a little bit is that apparently he got a little bit conscious of outcomes at the plate instead of just playing the game. But I think that's something that's going to fix as he gets older, a little more mature. And he doesn't necessarily have a position, so he kind of projects as a first baseman, but there's a possibility that maybe down the line he could be a third baseman. For me, though, what I see is a guy at the plate who is going to mash. I have no doubt in my mind that this kid's going to be able to hit, especially at Fenway Park. He's going to be putting a lot of balls over the Green Monster. I love this pick by the Boston Red Sox. Fantastic job by Heim Bloom. What a steal. With a 92nd pick in the 2020 MLB draft, the Milwaukee Brewers selected Xavier Warren out of Central Michigan. He's a catcher, switch hitter, reminds me a lot of Francisco Mejia, but better. I think he's a better catcher than Francisco Mejia. That's kind of where he struggles. Not great behind the plate. Xavier Warren may not be a catcher down the line per se, but I think he is a better catcher than what we see of Mejia. And their swings, the fact that they're both switch hitters, that is like my comp. I think that he has a Francisco Mejia type swing. Violent up there at the plate. Big hacks from both sides. There is going to be that swing and miss potential. There is going to be the possibility that he doesn't hit consistently for an average, but I like what I see there from the hit tools from Xavier Warren. The same reason you get excited for Francisco Mejia, you get excited for Xavier Warren, and he's a little bit bigger, so the pop might even be a little more. At number 100, of course, the Los Angeles Dodgers have to find their way into this video. They took Jake Vogel out of Huntington Beach High School. He's an outfielder, 5'11", 165, a little small, but he plays not that small, I'm not gonna lie. Really interesting prospect. What gets everyone excited about Jake Vogel is his speed. He absolutely flies. He is lightning quick, lightning fast, can run for days. And normally when you hear that, you go, but he can't hit. To me, he looks like a good hitter. Quick bat, quiet swing. He's not necessarily gonna be a guy who hits for power. Like I said, 5'11", 165, he needs to put some size on for sure to hit more power. But with his speed and the ability to put the ball in play, I really like what Jake Vogel can turn into as a major league player. And we know that the Dodgers organization just takes guys like this and they'll make them great. They take worse players and make them great. Jake Vogel has plus tools at a lot of different areas. I can only imagine how good the Dodgers are gonna make him. This is a guy that you might wanna circle, star, whatever you wanna do. Keep an eye out for him. He's gonna be something special if the Dodgers get to keep him. Now this next player possibly is my biggest riser in the entire draft. He was taken with the second pick in the fourth round by the Baltimore Orioles at Stoneman Douglas High School, Kobe Mayo. 6'5", 215, third baseman. I think this kid is a stud. I love what I'm seeing out of him. To put it into perspective, I have him in the same range as Jordan Walker, who was selected in the first round by the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Orioles were able to get him at 103. So what you see with Kobe Mayo is very similar to Jordan Walker. Massive kids, 18 years old, and they are huge. Something you cannot teach. Something you can't really develop. They are going to be big forever. Unlike Jordan Walker, though, I love his swing right from the start. His swing is super quick. It's not very long. He gets to the baseball. He crushes the ball. Might be a little bit pull happy, but that's okay. I'd rather see him pull the ball consistently than have a long swing and struggle to put the ball in play. Not much of an athlete, which is why you probably saw him drop a little bit in this draft. Jordan Walker does appear to be a better athlete, but at the plate, I think he's got way better hit tools than Walker, especially right now at 18 years old. I think he's going to project to be a better hitter, and he's got an absolute cannon of an arm, so stick him at third base, let him be over there, or maybe even right field down the line. I have no clue, but at the plate, this kid is something special. I'm telling you, I love this pick. This might be my favorite pick in the entire draft. At pick number 111, we saw the Los Angeles Angels go and take a high school short 
shortstop out of Detroit, Michigan, Werner Blakely. Six foot three, 185. He is basically O'Neill Cruz, who is a top 100 prospect in the game right now. I think Werner Blakely is going to be a really, really fun prospect to watch. Very high on him, just outside my top 50, like in that 50 to 60 range. And ranked ahead of some guys who went in the first round, in my opinion, like Justin Foscue, Jordan Westberg, Alika Williams. So when you see Werner Blakely, the first thing that jumps out to you is his size. He's a big, tall kid, lanky. I gave you the O'Neill Cruz build. I think that's very, very accurate. His swing, though, is very quick, something that O'Neill Cruz does struggle with. Sometimes his swing can get a little bit long. I think Werner Blakely is very quick through the zone. That bat flies through there. Now, you can fix his hands a little bit with the load. They're not very quiet. They are moving a bit, so he does hit well in BP. I want to see what he does more in games, but again, that's an easy fix, and especially for a guy with his size, he's not going to lose out on the power. That's always a fear, is if you change someone's swing, maybe that's how they generate all the power, but he's still a massive kid and only 18, because when he does make contact with the ball, which is pretty often from what it looks like, the power is there. Jumps off his bat. Big, big potential for him. I actually think he is a shortstop where O'Neill Cruz moves to a different position, maybe third. He plays shortstop really smooth. Quick hands, soft hands, fast release, nice arm. I like Werner Blakely a lot. Angels with a really, really good pick here. And then for the final player in today's video, we're going to go to the Chicago Cubs pick in the fourth round. They took him at number 117. Big left-handed pitcher out of San Jacinto College North in Texas, Luke Little. Now, you might know Luke Little because he was going viral on social media. Big left-handed arm who was hitting like 103 consistently in a pen the other day. The issue with Luke Little is doesn't really throw strikes, but when you're 6'8", left-handed, throw 103 with ease, have nasty secondary pitches, I don't care if you can't throw strikes. We will figure out how to get you there. Even if he takes a few off his fastball, guess what? He's still throwing 98 from the left-hand side. Now, I don't know if he's really a starter per se. He probably projects more as a reliever so that you can get the most out of him, but that doesn't bother me. You know who else is a nasty left-handed reliever who's pretty valuable? Aroldis Chapman. The Cubs know a little something about him. So I really like this pick from Luke Little. He is going to be a project. He's not going to be flying through the minor league system from what I can tell. Just needs to learn how to throw a little more strikes, but the stuff is there. I think you have nasty potential closer here. So those are the 11 best picks from day two in the MLB draft. I'd love to know what you guys think about them down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you believe the Blaze Jordan hype? What about some of these other names that maybe you didn't have on your radar? Remember to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. That's the best way to support the channel. I said 3,000 plus likes, so you'll get the grades tomorrow for every team's draft. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. All that's in the description. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up there. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video as well as this is my most recent upload. This content is fire. I'm telling you, the draft stuff has been so good. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Hopefully, it's the draft grades. Bye!